creatures, humans, living and working in space. How is NASA Langley Research Center supporting efforts for humans to continue to work in low Earth orbit and eventually in deep space? Center Director Lisa Rowe explains on NASA Edge. Good to see you. Good to see you again, yes. Yeah. Thanks so much. Hey, welcome. Would you like some coffee? Oh, I'd love Perfect, some. Yeah. Okay, why don't you go get us some? I'll have cream and sugar in mine, please. Oh, okay. All and right. uh, we'll okay. get going while you, you go do that. Mine's black. So, oh, okay. yeah, okay. Hey, thanks for having us today. This is oh. a nice building. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, thank sure you. Is. Brand new. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Lisa, thank you so much for agreeing to talk with us today about human space exploration. What is Langley's role in support of human space exploration? Well, we work closely with Johnson, we work closely with Marshall um, in developing the vehicles that they're currently working on. Um, that's been our traditional role in our history. That's been the kind of things that we've worked on. So we do all kinds of things, everything from doing the aero database for the space launch system, the new heavy lift vehicle that's getting built today. Also, we work on the landing systems for the Orion vehicle that's being designed at Johnson Space Center. We work on the launch abort system that would take the crew to safety in the event of emergency. We actually lead that here at Langley and work very closely with Johnson Space Center in doing that. So there's a number of roles, everything from structures and materials, that's where our expertise lies. Uh, aerosciences is another key area, and by, by that I mean flying through an atmosphere. That's aerosciences. We understand from a research standpoint the fundamental physics of how that works, and so when you're actually modeling a new launch vehicle and you need to know how it's going to perform as it flies through the atmosphere, that's the kind of things we do. We have large wind tunnels that we can actually do tests of models here and understand the heating on that vehicle as it's going to fly through the atmosphere, understand how it's going to perform. We work heavily in guidance, navigation, and controls, so how that vehicle is going to control as it flies through the atmosphere. Also nanomaterials, so very, very wow. small structures okay. are all kind of the things that we work on. Oh, hey, hey, Ooh. Franklin. Man, I hear Langley has the best coffee. Perfect, I was looking for coffee. Franklin. Where do you see Langley's role, let's say, 5, 10, 15 years down the road? We're looking at new technologies to be able to take large masses down to the surface of Mars, and, and that's another thing in our history, truly. We led the very first landings on Mars as part Viking. of Viking, yeah. And so we've maxed out that technology, these large parachutes, to get down to the surface of Mars. So today, we need something new and different. So we're working on these inflatable decelerators, these hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerators. Hyatt. Hyatt, Hyatt. Yeah, Hyatt. Yeah, that's, Hyatt. Right. that's yeah, exactly right. right. If you're going to take humans down to the surface of Mars, they're going to need a few things, some, some food, some water, right. you know, just different things like that. So we're going to be actually be able to do that. We're going to have to need um, new technologies that can get large masses down to the surface, and that's what Hyatt's all about. It sounds like it's a game-changing technology where it could change the way we study the planets or actually explore planets in the that's future. That's exactly right. It is a game-changing technology, and it actually falls under the game-changing program office. Hey, look it's at that. It just falls right in there. Out. Yeah. Yes, very good. All right. Uh, it's like it's like a coffee shortage in this place. Are we playing a, any role in, in commercial space? Yeah, we absolutely are. Um, we're working with Sierra Nevada, Boeing, also SpaceX. They're all doing testing here, working with some of our subject matter experts in different areas where they really kind of need some help. And that's working out really well. We have some great partnerships there. Sometimes they're coming in and testing in our wind tunnels. They want to see how their vehicle performs. We're a great place to do that. Matter of fact, probably one of the only places to do that, depending on what they're trying to do and what they're trying to learn about their vehicle. And so we're really proud to be commercial partners and helping these folks be successful in the future. We need them in the future to actually enable getting humans to low Earth orbit. That's that's part of our plan. You know, I see a model behind you on the stand, and it looks like it's an old model of HL20. Yes. And I understand that Sierra Nevada is using that concept for their Dream Tracer vehicle. Can you explain sort of that relationship where we kind of worked on it back in the 80s, yeah. and now it's coming back to life again. Yeah, worked on it back in the 80s, and that's the concept that they're moving forward. And, and we have a lot of folks that have 
come out of retirement to help out with that because they're just so excited to see that concept actually go to flight. And so Sierra Nevada has been just a wonderful partner I'm working with. Where do you see NASA and where do you see the, the world in 2069 with regards to space exploration? Well, let's see, by 2069, we should have people actually living on Mars. Boots well, on the ground. Boots on the ground. 20, 2069. Probably greater than that. I mean, boots on the ground should be in the, by the 20, late 2030s, I would say. Yeah. But, uh, but actually living on Mars by the 2060s. I mean, you said 2069. Right. That's, that's plenty of time to, to get up there, get, get to having colonies on, say, other planets, but also continuing to explore um, our own galaxy and, and knowing a lot about uh, other, the Earth-like planets that exist outside of our galaxy. That's the thing that drew me to NASA in the first place. We're defining history right now, the things that we do within NASA. Um, and that's just incredible, the things, the, the spacecraft that we put in orbit that actually study um, other planets. Um, we're learning how our own Earth was formed and, uh, and that, I find that just incredibly exciting. So. Uh, hmm. Uh, little Sumatra for the administrator. Oh. Hmm. Maybe they've relocated. Ooh, ah, that's gonna mark. Oh, that's gonna burn. Okay, he's gone. S speaking about Blair, uh, do you ever get heat from the other Senate directors for allowing him to work here at Langley? We don't admit to him actually working here. We, we kind of keep that under okay. the wraps, yeah.